Good morning, everyone. Hey, welcome. Welcome to uh, my backyard, which is very, very close to the Whitefish Trail. And if you're joining me today live, feel free to put in your name and um, your age that you are, maybe where you live, um, if it's not Whitefish. And so today I am here to meet with you. And it seems like just yesterday I was here meeting with you uh, in the spring when the flowers were blooming and leaves were coming out but things have changed right in the last uh, several months um, and let me introduce myself my name is Chris Dion and I, I'm the education coordinator with Whitefish Legacy Partners and we work hard on the Whitefish Trail to, to conserve um, nature to offer recreation for hiking and biking and exploring and also we do education so I'm so glad that you're here with me today and I'm out here under these aspen trees um, and it's chilly today right here in whitefish montana this morning we woke up with one of our first uh, pretty good frosts you know the grass was sparkly and it was foggy and the fog lifted and i can see snow up on the mountains and things are changing and i want to ask you do you know up here in montana in the in the united states um, what season is it you got it it's fall right so things happen in the fall that are so amazing. And I talk to a lot of people who just say, oh, I just love the fall. And I always want to ask them why. So I'm going to ask you what you love about fall. I'll think to myself, hmm, yeah, I got to say I love the colors. I love the leaves. Um, I love the, the smell of the air, right? It gets real crisp. What's different in the fall? What happens? What changes like compared to summer or spring? I bet you're saying that the days are getting shorter, right? Less daylight, less sun, and the temperature is getting colder, right? I'm out here with my sweater and my vest, and I've got my hot tea. Uh -huh, it's getting colder, and the leaves change color, and they, they, they drop from some of the trees, right? Uh, yeah, and I'm here today to talk to you about why the trees change, and also I invited, uh, I sent an invitation out to the forest to try to get some animals here today, so they're going to arrive shortly and they're going to tell us how they're changing in the fall um, because everything really is preparing for winter right now. So let's explore that. Um, so how do you change in the fall? What do you do that's different? You put on maybe a coat, especially in the morning when it's cold. Um, yeah, maybe you, maybe your mom or dad or grandma or caretaker likes to make soups. So sometimes our diet changes. We might eat a little more. Um, and yeah, we might have a fire, we might turn on the heat. So these are things that animals sort of do too, um, but they do a lot of different things. So let's start our exploration today with trees. Um, and I got a little collection of leaves. I like to go out and collect leaves. And I brought some of these beautiful red maple leaves, um, some yellow birch leaves, and we've got aspen leaves changing right behind me. So why do the trees change their color? Why do the leaves change color? And why do trees drop their leaves? Hmm. And there's a name for these kind of trees that drop their leaves. It's a really big word. I'm going to see if you can say it. It's got, let's see, it's got four syllables. You know what syllables are? It's like the beats of the word. Are you ready? They're called deciduous. Can you say that? Deciduous. Wits. I'm <laughs> if I say it slow, it gets weird. Deciduous. Say it fast now. Deciduous. Okay, that's how you pronounce that. And that means they shed their leaves. All right, so leaves in the summer, they're, they're green, they come out in spring, and they're like these big solar panels, right? They um, catch the sunlight, and they are green. Now there's a pigment, a, a color in the leaves, and it's something called chlorophyll. And the chlorophyll in the leaves is what captures the sun and captures the, uh, carbon dioxide from the air. And it, it's like a little factory that these leaves make food for the tree, right? Because trees don't have mouths. They have roots to suck up water and minerals, right? But they need sunlight and carbon dioxide to help make their own food called photosynthesis. We won't spend too much time on that, but I, what I want you to know is come fall, we talked about how there's less sun. So as it gets darker and the days get shorter, the trees receive a signal. It's not just the temperature that changes them. It's also the sunlight. And they're like, oh, it's that time again. 
we need to start bringing that chlorophyll, that green stuff, back in. So it breaks it down in the leaves and it actually can bring it back into its body. So when the leaves are out catching sun and then they don't have as much sun, they lose the green and there's other things that are always there behind the leaves, other colors. And all of a sudden those colors come out and there's red ones and there's yellow and orange and the red uh, pigment colors, those are called anthocyanins. Let me try to get this right. Antho cyanins and the yellow and orange are called carotenoids um, I always try to remember that like carrots are orange carrot carotenoid uh, similar um, colors right so that is what happens when they change color right but why do they fall why do leaves fall why do they let go why don't they just keep them well having leaves and having this green stuff and making food takes a ton of energy and when it gets cold and when it gets darker they can't survive making enough food so they bring it in and those leaves have water in them so you can imagine the cold night like last night uh like I, our garden was covered and maybe survived um to keep it warm the the water in them will freeze and it'll ruin the leaves and then if it snows and the trees have all their leaves deciduous trees like these aspens they're not they're not equipped to carry all that snow and so their leaves will get heavy and they can break so they drop their leaves they store their food they bring their food those sugars that they made down to their roots and they kind of go a little bit quiet during the winter don't make as much food maybe on a sunny day some aspens have greenish bark you might notice they can actually make food but most trees can't make food uh, most deciduous trees can't make food in the cold winter months so thanks to trees I want to show you something I made you can make this at home all you need is paper glue um, and leaves and so I made a little campfire with some leaves it looks like the, the flames right so I glued some leaves on the paper and then I had some fun. You could make like wild animals. I made um, a little birdie with a leaf and a googly eye with some wings flying through the forest. So you could have fun with that today after we finish today. Just go get some leaves, glue them on, draw around them, have some fun, right? So fun. And I encourage you to get out and make those leaf piles and jump in and, and enjoy um, what trees are doing. So let's talk now about animals. I'm going to look around and see if anybody has come to join us and I think we'll ask them today what they are doing um, differently in the fall and, and maybe a little bit about how they're preparing right now for the winter that's coming. Um, are there any animals here? Maybe you guys can call out. Animals, are you here? I've got my microphone. This is really cool. This microphone is magic and it allows us to hear animals talk in our in our language and and let's see who we've got here. Oh, here comes someone. Hey, who are you? Hello. Sorry, I'm just gonna... Hello, 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 hello. Hi, uh, my name is Beatrice. Hi, Beatrice. I'm a grizzly bear, and um, I can't talk long, and I'm really getting kind of grumpy because I'm so hungry. You're hungry, huh? Uh, yeah, I heard bears eat a lot. We do. But especially in the fall, it's called hyperphagia. Hyper what? Hyperphagia. And what we do is we might eat for like 20 hours a day. And we eat all that we can because I've got to get really fat. Yeah, so tell me about that. Why is that? Well, I sleep all winter. Um, I go into a, a kind of like a hibernation called torpor. And I have to uh, rely on my fat all winter long. So I've got to eat, hey, please don't eat the microphone. Oh, hey, sorry. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, let's see, what else can I tell you before I gotta go? Uh, I can eat up to 60,000 calories a day. 60,000, so that sounds like a lot, but could you make that into something these kids could, you know, understand a little bit better? Well, if you think of a cheeseburger, a cheeseburger has about 300 calories, give or take. And so I would have to eat 200 cheeseburgers a day. 200 cheeseburgers? But you don't eat cheeseburgers. No, 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 no. I don't eat people food. But I have to eat insects and larvae, you know, the little worms and the bugs. And I also eat lots of plants. I like this time of year, you know, the, the berries and the uh, rose hips. So, uh, oh, I see some over there. I gotta go. Oh, Beatrice Bear. Go, she's in hyperphagia. 
and bears can be pretty grumpy. Grizzly bears need to eat a lot of food to get uh, all their storage and their fat for winter. I think someone else is coming up here. Let's see who this is. Hmm. Oh, hey, how are you kids doing? Who are you? Uh, my name's Manny the Moose, and um, I, uh, I'm getting ready for winter myself, but um, <clears throat> I'm kind of grumpy right now. Well, why is that? Uh, you see these, these, these antlers? Oh, they're so itchy. Oh, they're covered in velvet, and they have like, they're fed by, you know, blood, and they're, they're, um, they get really itchy this time of year, and I'm trying to get the velvet off, and then it's just, they're going to fall off soon, but I grow these big things all year long, and it, and it definitely shows off to the, the moose, you know, the ladies, that I'm really healthy and I've had a good diet. And so, uh, it, you know, it, it calls the ladies in when they see them. But, man, are they itchy. Could you scratch them for me? Here, let me put down the microphone. Let's give them a good itch. All right. So, moose, tell us, is there anything you're doing um, differently uh, right now that is getting you ready for winter? Oh yeah, my fur coat's getting thicker. I've got hollow hollow fur and it keeps me warm, kind of like your, your puffy down vest you got on. So you kids probably wear warmer clothes and I do that too with my fur coat. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of looking uh, for the ladies right now. And then come winter, I'll just kind of saunter off on my own again. But I, I stay awake all winter and have a nice fur coat. And uh, my diet has to re rely on lots of twigs and branches of willows and aspens. So if you notice any aspens or willow bushes that have been chewed on in the winter, in the fall, that's probably me. So, okay kids, uh, have a great fall. Happy Halloween. Bye. Bye, Manny Moose. All right, moose are like us. They put on fur coats, they stay awake all winter. Can you imagine eating twigs all winter though? All right, are there any other animals here? Animals, calling all animals. Oh, I see someone. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's moving really, really slow. Let's see. Let's see if I can. Are you okay down there? Here, why don't you come up here? I'll give you a lift. Hello. How's it going? Who are you? I'm Tony the Turtle. And, uh,. It's getting cold when there's less sun and I need sun to warm up my body. You know how you just kind of always stay the same temperature? You know, like when they take your temperature and you're supposed to be like 98, you know, 0. 0.6 degrees. Uh, well, I um, change with the weather. So I'm getting kind of cold. I'm getting rather slow. And I just sometimes sink down to the bottom of the pond. And uh, sometimes I'll dig into the mud. And I just, I'm really just kind of slow. And uh, it's called brumation. It's kind of like hibernation. But if it gets warm and there's no ice on the water, I might go get some sun. So, yeah. So, tell me this. When you're down in the bottom of the pond... And it, and it gets ice on top. Uh -huh. Well, um, how do you breathe under there? Because you need to come up for air, right? You're, you're not a fish. You don't have gills. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good question, kid. Okay, okay. So, I can breathe through parts of my body that have lots of veins. Do you know what your veins are, kid? It's where your blood flows through. So, I have a lot of veins on my, um, you know. You, you're what? Go ahead, say it. Uh, my, my behind, uh, my, my tuchus, my, um, my rear, my, my bum bum, you know, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but I've got a lot of veins there on the surface and then they can get oxygen into my body from the water because water has oxygen. And I really like ponds because ponds don't freeze all the way. The water stays kind of cold, uh, but it doesn't freeze all the way where, where if, if I was out in the winter and late fall and it's cold, I would freeze because the air gets too cold sometimes for me. So anyway, I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the lake, check it out down in the pond, and uh, I'll see you kids uh, in the spring, okay? Bye. Bye, Tony. Wow, Tony the turtle.
can breathe through his bottom. It's just, we learn something new every day. And brumation, brumation, I've never heard that word, brumation. That's what they do when they get tired and cold and slow down. All right, I think we got one more visitor. <whistles> Calling all, oh, we've got an insect. Come on up. Hey, hey, dudes, what's going on? Hi. Hey, who are you? I am Greta the Grasshopper. Yeah. Okay, so what are you doing out this late in the fall? Well, on nice sunny days, you might see me on the sidewalks and the meadows, jumping around. I'm a full adult in the fall. I grew all, all spring and summer. And then we have parties out in the meadows. Parties? Yeah, we like to party. We have parties, and you know, I go on a date with with a boy grasshopper, and and then right now I am about to go lay my eggs in the dirt. You're gonna lay your eggs in the dirt, huh? Yep, that's my last job. I'll go lay my eggs in the dirt. Next spring, when it gets warm and the, when the ground gets soft, my little babies will come out. Oh, that's so neat. So, so what's gonna happen to you? Oh yeah. Well, it's the circle of life. I probably might not survive the winter, but the cool thing is, is that I'm gonna go to the great meadow in the sky. Well, I'm glad you're so positive. Oh yeah, I've had a good life. I lasted all summer and I'm gonna go lay my eggs now before this ground gets too cold. Did you see that frost this morning? I did. All right, well, see you dudes. Bye. Greta the grasshopper is going to lay her eggs in the dirt so that they can hatch uh, next spring. So they'll be in the ground all winter. That is so fascinating, is it? Oh my goodness. I just love these animals. And I went to the library yesterday and I got a book to read to you today. I know that things appear backwards on the screen, so I will read it to you. But this is called Mousekin's Thanksgiving. And this book is about a little mouse in, uh, in the month of November, which is coming up. And uh, kind of teaches us some things about what might go on for some other animals. All right, here's little mouse Ken. Do you see it? So cute, sniffing the berries. Mouse Ken's Thanksgiving. Mouse Ken was hungry when he woke in the night. A cold November wind blew through the forest. It lifted and scattered the leafy roof that covered his home on the ground. Hmm, he's got a home on the ground, huh? You see that? Mousekin peered from his tiny lined nest to the bare swaying branches above. He looked for owls that hover on air or hawks that might have awakened as he had hungry in the night. Only the wind playing harp through the trees met Mousekin's large silken ears and a sound far off in the forest, a sound he had never heard before, a very soft gobble, gobble, gobble. When Mousekin was certain all was still, he hopped from his nest on the ground. He ran to the foot of a hickory tree where a store of his food had been buried. Mousekin stopped in his tracks at the tree. He squeaked and squealed with anger. His store of nuts, seeds, and berries had been stolen. <gasps> Everyone! The ground around was stripped and torn down to the tangled roots of the tree. The little mouse trembled with rage and fear. No seed-eating creature he had known could dig so wide and deep a hole. Mousekin leaped for safety and raced to the top of the tree. He huddled there till daybreak. When he dared to peer out, he spied nut meat, seeds, and berries tucked into the tree's shaggy bark. Hmm. Mousekin was very hungry now. He reached for one of those seeds. Before he could pry it loose, a woodpecker net landed nearby. Be off, he cried as he went rat-a-tat-tat -tat with his beak on the hickory tree. I saw the creature that stole your food. It was bigger than a pheasant. It was bigger than a goose. It was the biggest bird I've ever seen, and it might like mice. Mousekin hurried to the bottom of the tree. He was very hungry now. A white-footed mouse makes certain he has more than one winter store. He ran beneath the litter of leaves that covered the forest floor till he came to a tall evergreen. Beneath the pine tree was a hole freshly dug 
where Mousekin had hidden another food store, a pile of pine needles, was all that was left of weeds, seeds, beech nuts, and dried berries. Poor little Mousekin. He heard the chatter of squirrels as they woke in the tree above. Mousekin knew squirrels ate nuts and seeds. He squeaked and drummed his tiny paw to let them know his anger. We didn't take your store of food, the frisky squirrels cried. Our food was gathered in the fall and stored inside our nests. We saw the creature that stole your food. It was very big and it was frightful. It had a naked blue head and a warty red neck with long, sharp spurs on its legs. Muskin spied a cottontail napping in the brush. Angrier than ever, he drummed his paw. The rabbit woke and thumped her foot in answer. I didn't steal your winter store, but I saw the one that did. It was big, it was ugly, and it made the strangest sound. Not far from the stump in the stand of trees, they heard a the rabbit disappeared into her burrow. Mousekin stood frozen with fear. <coughs> a huge bird rushed from cover. His shiny feathers were ruffled and fluffed. His wingtips made a rattling noise as they brushed along the ground. With the tail feather spread like a great fan behind him, he was a fearsome sight. Do you know who that is? Uh-huh. The wild turkey rushed past Mousekin. He rushed at the swooping owl. The owl had spied Mousekin crouching in the clearing, but quickly changed its mind. It would never come that way again to hunt for white-footed mice. Mousekin scrambled to the top of a tree and hopped inside a hollow. He was still very, a very hungry mouse, but glad to be alive. As he fell asleep, he heard the turkey call. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Gobble, 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 gobble. Can you gobble? As Mousekin slept, the first snow of winter fell. It blanketed the tops of the trees and the forest floor below. It hid the food all creatures need to see a long, cold winter through. Mousekin woke to the chatter of squirrels and a woodpecker's rat a tat tat he heard chickadees calling, chickadee bee bee, chickadee bee bee, and the turkeys, gobble, 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 gobble. What Mousekin saw when he peered below surprised the little mouse. There was a happy gathering of creatures and a feast spread out on the snow. Ha! Huh. What just happened? The wild turkey, with feathers unruffled, dug beneath the deep white cover. He turned up grapes, dried apples, and seeds. There were acorns for everyone. Mousekin scampered to the ground. He stuffed his cheeks with all he could carry, then hurried back to his nest in the hollow. When evening came, Mousekin curled to sleep. There would be plenty to eat and nothing to fear with the big, friendly bird roosting near. Wow! You know, for a while there, I thought that there was some, like, mean, angry, scary creature in the forest. Uh, but it turned out to be a turkey, and the turkey was digging in the dirt and kicking up all sorts of food for the other creatures. So, so Mousekin uh, didn't have to go hungry after all. So, that story um, reminds me of, of our forest and what some of the animals um, are doing in our forest, like, like mice and squirrels, and they have to store their food. So, um... Maybe you have a closet at home and a refrigerator that, where you put your food, and they do the similar thing. So um, we're coming to a close here this morning, and I can't let you go without a song. You know, I always like to sing to you. It's a little cold out, so I'm going to have a sip of tea, and you can tune up your vocal cords and, and get your dancing pants ready. Here we go. I'm going to get my guitar out. We've got a little detuned. And so I'm going to sing a song about fall in the forest. Oh boy, we need that one. It's good enough, right? Okay. Let me get my words here. So, so here we go. Let's sing about the 
think they made about fall in the forest. What do the animals do? So we have to what do the plants do? When the nights grow longer and the days become colder, tell me, what does the forest do? You might need to eat like a bear who's gone to sleep. You might migrate like a bird to a warmer place. You might have to change just to fit in. You might lose your leaves like a tree who stores food within. But whatever you do, winter's coming for you. And fall is the time to prepare. Do you ever wonder what happens to the forest in the fall? Do you ever wonder what happens when all the leaves are gone? What do the animals do? songs about nature um, and you know we learned about what the animals and some of the trees are doing um, to get ready for winter because it's fall but I hope to see you back for winter and we'll talk about what's going on then and in the meantime make sure you know in these days where you're you're uh, maybe not in school or maybe on the weekends or if you're homeschooled to get out on the whitefish trail and if you're not in whitefish go out on your other local trails and and really enjoy the fall and maybe you'll see some of these animals maybe you'll see some of these trees that are changing right now thank you so much for being here with me today uh, i hope to see you again soon thanks from the whitefish uh, legacy partners and be well <laughs>